<laughs> I bought some old school Reebok pump shoes. So, you know, like the tongue where it has the pump? Oh, the yeah. Ball I remember pump. those. I noticed those right away, Joe, when I walked into the <laughs> office, in case you have forgotten what happened about, I don't know, an hour or so ago. You know what's great is I woke up this morning, I got dressed, and my family <laughs> never made one comment about this. They were like, nah, there's daddy again, just <laughs> dressed in his ridiculous <laughs> outfits. You're listening to the Pre-Race Happy Hour Podcast, where race directors Faye Yates and Joe Fleenor sit down over drinks to discuss this year's race, what to expect, and swap some fun stories along the way. To find your next race, visit magicsportsusa.com. Joe, wow. We just came off, I feel like, our most fantastic weather. We've had really lucky, I mean, races this year with weather. All season. For the most part. This was the most fantastic weather yet, though. Who would have thought in early August <laughs> you see, you in said Tennessee, I, you almost like October, October <laughs> <laughs> we would have like upper 60s for the start of the race. Yeah. It's pretty nice. It was River so Bluff nice. was great. River Bluff was fantastic. I, you know, it was my fourth year there, your eighth year there. It was our biggest year with by, participation. Yeah, by a good bit too. Yeah, by a good bit. And everybody was so happy. I mean, the weather helps. Um, but our staff was so happy too. <laughs> Doesn't you know, it doesn't hurt when they're not so sweaty just all the time? With a record loadout, <laughs> with a record participation and a record loadout time. Yeah, lots of records set. Well, at least two. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a consistent theme. It seems like where we are, um, you know, knock on wood, this continues moving forward. But we're kind of knocking it out of the park in terms of our racers' participation numbers, just satisfaction with our crew, like you mentioned on yeah. you know the work that we put into these races. It's hard sometimes, and everybody seems to be very happy and yeah. ready to go back for the next one, and we're pretty much every two weeks, we have another one. We have been on a roll, and guess what? <laughs> we, are, we have another one coming up, yeah. and we're going to talk about it. We have two more triathlons left. Up next is? The 39th annual Buster Britton <laughs> Memorial Triathlon. Yeah. 39 yeah. years. It's the oldest um, event for the company, Team Magic. This started the company. All right, well, let, let's pause here, because that's that's a big deal to say. It's a big deal. And we I need think to get to something We do want to get into that. Yeah, I know, um, I know where you're headed. <laughs> but in front of us, I see some ice melting, and I don't want it to melt too much <laughs> really, longer before really we dive into this. <laughs> but this is our race director happy hour. Yeah. I'm um, talking about the 39th annual Buster Britton Memorial Triathlon. And being is that it's a happy hour, and being is that, that we're recording this at 10.30 a.m., um, it didn't seem appropriate for us to just knock back cold ones or whatever. <laughs> so we busted out what we call a happy hour brunch drink this yes. morning. Oh. And so this has nothing to do with Bur Birmingham no. or Oak Mountain State Park or Alabama in general. It's just what we enjoy drinking at 10.30 in the exactly. morning. Exactly. What are we going to have at 10.30? And today we're yeah. having Bloody Marys. Yeah. We both love Bloody Marys. I know. Luckily, all of the drinks we've had so far, we both enjoy, yeah. so we haven't had to fight yeah. too much on this. Exactly. But we've made some delicious Bloody Marys. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can check them out. I mean, they're fully garnished. Oh, they're beautiful, Joe. <laughs> and Joe gets full credit. He he makes our drinks. I'm just going to tell you. I enjoy them. He makes them. And you've done a really stand-up job with this, Joe. Well, let's, let's toast Cheers. to another great race coming up. Let's see how these taste. I've taken mm. a couple pre-sips, so I can... Have you? Yeah. So these, as I've mentioned mm. in previous Not podcasts, just enough. Just enough spice. Just enough kick. <laughs> just enough size. We, we try to get these sponsored now. We've gotten greedy. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one doesn't really have a natural sponsor to no. line up to it, but we do have some nice Tito's vodka, which I think is a nice little yeah. um, mixer vodka to drink. So I like Tito's. Could we could work on that for a sponsorship for sure. It'd be nice. Get busy, Joe. <laughs> Joe well, as we drink... Our delicious Bloody Marys. Yeah. Uh, we invite everybody that's listening to also um, partake in their favorite drink of choice during this sure. happy hour podcast. Absolutely. Um, but we are here to talk about the Buster Britton Triathlon. You were hinting at the history of this event and why yeah. it's so important in the history of magic sports as well. And I'd love you to talk yeah. more about Buster Britton and kind of the, the right. legacy that this race has had with our company. Yeah. Well, first off, the title, um, Buster Britton Memorial Triathlon. Uh, Buster Britton was... Uh, 
early days before my time, um, early days triathlete, running guy, triathlete, uh, that really kick started triathlon in Birmingham. He, and, you know, of all places, you know, we talked about when we talked about Gunnersville. You wouldn't expect Alabama to necessarily, necessarily be in the forefront of triathlon, as you think California, and in California was, but Alabama was right there next because these are two of the oldest races: our Gunnersville race and this race um, in Oak Mountain State Park. Buster kicked it off, and unfortunately, he passed at a fun run. I mean, this guy did triathlons and all the you know longer runs, and he was one of those. You know, you hear these stories of people that are really active and super fit and the fun run is their day and that was his day and so from that point forward the Oak Mountain Spring Triathlon became the Buster Britton Memorial Triathlon. Oh well. Wow. Yeah. So, so previously it was the Oak Mountain Sprint Triathlon. Spring. Spring Triathlon. Yeah, so a local medical center, Brookwood Medical Center okay. um, was behind that and then the founder of Team Magic Therese Bynum who's retired mm-hmm. and how we're sitting here now just <laughs> together, Therese retired and we merged uh Therese bought the race from Brookwood. I'm not sure what the sale price was. <laughs> but, but I think that it was reasonable. A, that would be a fact. I think it might have been reasonable. a, would you like to take this over? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. And it's been going uh, since. And it's consecutive, right? So this race and yeah. our Gunnersville race are consecutive because we were able to host them during COVID. That's incredible. So not just the longest running race for the company, but the longest consecutive. Yeah. Yeah. We'll no, that's great. Those. Yeah. Um, 39 years is a long time um, yeah. and consecutively is impressive. So there aren't many, if any, honestly, races out there that have the longevity, but also yeah. the consistency right. and continued growth with yeah. the race. The race isn't one that struggles. Yeah. Um, we bring out a good bit of people every year. Um, and we've got a fantastic venue, right. um, which hey, I'd like to talk about. We'll talk about the venue. I need to point out something, though. Yeah. So speaking of longevity, um, this was my first sprint triathlon. <laughs> really? Yeah. I'll, you, I'll show you a picture. How'd later. you finish? I don't know. No, I don't remember. I mean, what second, my age group? Maybe third. <laughs> oh, of know. course, you won. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I, was so, I was so nervous to do it. And yeah, so this is my first sprint in the Gunnersville race, Mountain Lakes at the state park was, at the time was just an Olympic race. Yeah. I want to know something about you. <laughs> Great. We've talked a little bit about I'm this. I'm going to need a drink for this. <laughs> so... Mm-hmm. Your very first sprint triathlon, what did that look like for you? Like when you went out there, <laughs> what did you look like? What did your, what kind of bike did you have? Like, were you hardcore mm-hmm. immediately out of the gates with this? Or were you like, you know, a lot of our athletes that come out for the first time and they have no idea what's going on. And um, yes. like, what was your experience? So, I mean, I was kind of halfway there only because I knew a couple of people that owned the local bike shop that was organizing they gave me a few tips, but I was still, I mean, I didn't go out and buy a bunch of stuff. I didn't know I was going to get into this. I'm like most of our racers. I yeah. was like most of our racers. I was in, I had a one piece swimsuit on of some sort, but then I threw on some running shorts and a tie dye shirt nice. with the sleeves cut out. <laughs> I have a great picture. I'll show you later. <laughs> and I borrowed some sunglasses that are now popular again, by the way. They are the look, the really big. Oh yeah. Yeah. I borrowed some of those from a friend. It's I funny how those any. are back in style now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I borrowed these and, you know, I knew nothing about them, but I did the whole race with the, I knocked the nose piece off. So I did the whole race with the nose piece. So I had like a little cut right here from the <laughs> bouncing, like my, you know, my styrofoam helmet was hitting it maybe. So back then, it was a styrofoam helmet, by the way, with a cover. <laughs> back then, when you did this race, how many how many females raced back in those days? You know, I, it was probably twenty something percent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All right, we could do a whole other podcast just on like the history <laughs> of like female in the sport because uh, I be think fun, we've got actually we've actually got a lot of you and Therese have a massive amount of experience that could share a lot. So be a lot that'd fun. be kind of cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So this being thirty ninth year, we. Um, take pride in bringing new people to the sport. And we talk about this each and every podcast, but the number of people we bring to the race that have never done a triathlon before, this race might be the tops of all of them in terms of percentage of athletes. But we have 28% of everybody that's going to be there on race day will be doing their very first triathlon, which is fantastic. I love it. I mean, I think we we always get, this is the, from what I can remember, our largest number of first timers at this race, which is super exciting for that area um, to, to be bringing in new people. Um, and maybe the word's just gotten out because it is a super duper calm lake. It's a man-made lake. You're never going to get a ripple in it. So there's really nothing that can fire up this lake. And it's small enough that even if you get a wind, which we're not expecting, we're expecting perfect weather again. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's a, it's a great first time swim for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful lake. 
Yeah. Um, we also have just in general of everybody that's going to be at the race, over 50% of the, our athletes, including those first timers, um, over 50% will be doing mm-hmm. Buster for their very first time. So we're excited yeah. to showcase the race to a whole new audience as well. Right, right. Yeah, that's fun too. And I think that's that number's been pretty consistent, right? We've been 40 to 50%. Somewhere around there, yeah. Maybe a few lower than that. And the other 50% that have done it before, it would be interesting to see how many people have done it like over 10 times or over, we, we could do that math if we wanted to, but there's a lot of repeat customers in that 50%. Yeah. And they have watched this race move I wouldn't, it's not the entire race moving because the bike course and the run course are basically the same every year and it's the same lake for the swim. Yep. But when we call it ground zero or the, where the exact site is, where we have the transition area, the swim start, swim finish, um, has moved around uh, to really every spot that you could possibly have it <laughs> on that section of Double Oak Lake. <laughs> and this year... Just every parking lot for transition. <laughs> well, before we get into all those minor tweaks that we've done this year... Yeah. You were telling me earlier that, you know, a lot of races that we do that have had, you know, 30 to 40 years running um, have had varying venues. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're not always in the same spot. Yeah. This race has always been at Oak Mountain State Park for 39 straight years. Yeah, it's the only one, you know, on the calendar because, you know, the the Gunnersville race is the second longest running and it was at the... Uh, Lake Gunnersville State Park, and then it moved into the city to the rec center. This race has always been at Oak Mountain. Yeah. And so there's so many cool things about this race, in addition to just the, how beautiful it is there and peaceful. Um, it has a really, really good story. It's a great story. Well, when we when we joined forces and I went down and worked that race for the first time, that, sadly, um, embarrassingly, honestly, is uh, my first time ever being in that state park. Um, again, we would kind of drive through Birmingham or through Alabama to go to the beach was kind of my experience with Alabama. Um, and I never gave it the credence that it deserves because Oak mountain is fantastic. Um, every time we drive in there, we drive by the most beautiful, like public golf course. We drive by hundreds of miles of hiking trails. Yeah. The mountain biking scene is kind of like Northwest Arkansas kind of mountain bike it's scene where amazing. it's just incredible. Yeah. Um, and just all the different outdoor entertainment options that they offer there is incredible. Right. Yeah. 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 There's so much to do and lots, tons of trail running because those, those mountain bike trails, lots of ultra trail runs, tons of trail running, like you said, hiking. Um, it's just, it's, it's just a place that I think, and maybe they, some the people that use the trails probably like that it goes unnoticed a little bit by <laughs> yeah. other people because it, it doesn't get so busy, but it's nice. I, I used to mountain bike a lot too, and I mountain biked on those trails a ton when I lived in Birmingham. So I might bring my mountain bike still. We've talked about yeah, it. Yeah, you should do it. Um, I think we have a staffer that's going to roll with you, right, Les? Yeah, and maybe we can just do like an open invite. Yeah. If anybody wants to join, oh boy, this is a big, but I'm going to say it. If anybody wants to join me. What day would that be? Friday. Friday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to hit the trails, I believe. Now, I'm a you know, mediocre level <laughs> mountain biker, so I'm not doing jumps and stuff. Yeah. But I like to get out there and, and ride. So if anybody, if anybody wants to join me, um, reach out. Maybe we can do like a little group ride. That'd be fun yeah, on Friday morning. You'll really enjoy it. Yeah. I don't have a mountain bike anymore. I just gave my mountain bike away. But um, yeah, you should do it. Plus, I need somebody to pull me out of the oh, woods sure. when I crash or yeah, something. Yeah, I'll be there for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little bit about the slight variations of our race staging area this year and what that, <laughs> See that? you got the vegetation up in your mouth <laughs> when you. Vegetation's attacking so. me. I feel like I need to drink this. It's going to become water. Doesn't it? Does the I, alcohol I, I, evaporate? <laughs> <laughs> the alcohol will not evaporate. <laughs> but you, so I want to talk for those of you that are just listening and not watching, I think we need, they need to understand how beautiful this drink is where we have garnished it with full celery stalk yeah some parsley two green olives a lime wedge all you know all i needed i need to do what like some of those restaurants do where they put like a burger on top oh yeah where it's just ridiculous <laughs> but this is um it's enough joe i mean i think it's fancy enough we don't need a burger <laughs> well, we don't need a green bean in here oh uh, a green bean you're right yeah so that's a common thing yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't go green beam. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't need it. So talk about the change in our race staging area where we've had it in years past. Um, mm-hmm. Pretty consistently has been in that field where the basketball courts are. And um, we've now kind of shifted down the road quite a uh, little ways. Yeah. So talk about that. Yeah. So last year we, 
We, well, we've found ourselves dealing with some rain leading up to the race for the past couple of years, and who knows what will happen this year. But we were in a field, and what that represents a challenge, and, and we, we dealt with throwing a lot of hay last year. Now, I grew up on a farm, so it was I'm familiar with hay, but I didn't really want to spend all of Friday tossing hay around the transition area. So it's actually, it was a cool spot, but <laughs> <laughs> Joe's losing. In case you're not watching, Joe just lost his olives. I was really looking forward to eating those olives, too. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you one of mine. <laughs> so we just, you know, there's a parking lot where the run course goes out. That for people that have done this race before, this makes no sense to anyone else. No. Uh, there is a parking lot available. It's really a nice spot for a transition area, and it's got some really cool pavilions near there. And honestly, we used to be at the race. That was our venue before, and we loved it. And we were the race was in June, and it was also a big weekend for our big Boy Scout camp. Yeah. And it just got to the point that the Boy Scout camp grew, and their hours changed, and our setup, it was just not working well together. We said, okay, let's just play nice, and we'll just move down the road, because they just established this field right. that was available, which was not available before. Mm-hmm. So we said, okay, let's try this. So now we're in August, and it just hit us this year. It's like, oh, we're in August. I mean, we were in August last year, too, but it just hit us this year that we were indeed in August. Yep. So we moved back to the, not original site, but one of our previous sites that worked well. Well, I think we're all very optimistic about this, just thinking through the logistics of how our races work and, you know, the structure of getting in and out of transition and the finish line and the whole logistics of a race. Mm-hmm. This seems to make the most sense um, as a a pretty dramatic improvement. I hope it actually pans out the way yeah. we envision this to work out. Yeah. But just the logistics all in all are going to be so much better than I think in the past where we've had to kind of walk the bike down the path across the little bridge and that whole turnaround setup where I think we now have it a little bit more fine-tuned, which is going to yeah. be better for spectators, athletes, and everybody combined. I think so too. Yeah. I think for people listening to this, speaking of spectators, I just want to say something in case you don't have it on your nice little cheat sheet you always, <laughs> thank goodness, have for our podcast. Um it's very, very important that people realize when they come to this park to watch this race, or if they're doing the sprint race and like buzzing to get out early, really want people to think about trying to hang until our last biker goes out. So the the one, the way into the venue is part of the bike course, and we try to keep that bike course open to with no traffic and our new location is really going to help us with that as well uh, the way the parking is going to work out we're really excited about that we just need people to stay put a little bit yeah and it's, it's not that come long. and enjoy the park it's not that long you know it, it's it's generally your fast sprint people that get done pretty quick yep and then they're kind of antsy they kind of get moving yeah. um yeah and we just need them and their spectators to realize let's let's Keep a safe environment for everybody. Yeah. And get all those bikes off the road. Enjoy the beauty of the park. Which is roughly 1030 ish. No, even before, maybe 10, 945 to 10. 10. Yeah. So yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So the swim course is a big change. Um, I mean, same lake and everything, but it's mm-hmm. now um, totally different kind of swim setup. Same distances, but it's it's just a kind of a rectangle course now versus you're kind of down here. Sorry. What's the, oh, yeah. We got Teddy's te- in here today. Yeah. So a few episodes ago, we featured <laughs> another um, office dog, yeah. which was a puppy, Harvey. He was Harvey's Harvey. still a puppy. So Harvey's not in the office all the time as he's, you know, learning to be a dog. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But we do have Teddy, who is here. He's full grown. And Teddy is... Um, he's grown up here. He's grown up he's here. seven. From a puppy to a... He's yeah. seven now. His first place he visited in Nashville was this warehouse coming back from the Chattanooga Waterfront Triathlon. Yeah. It's just his first exposure. I mean, yeah. luckily we don't have any UPS man coming in or anything like that. Exactly. So. No deliveries. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing great. <laughs> um, all right. So the swim is a little bit different. You can check that out on our on our website. Uh, we're excited about that. And yep. then they come out for the bike course. Bike course is generally the same, except a little bit um, farther up the road to kind of turn for your second loop, Yep. which again is going through a, a parking lot. So it's a fairly easy, make sense second loop yep. turn yep. for everyone. And then the run course, again, is very similar to what it was in the past. Different finish line, obviously. The start and pretty finish much everything else is the same. Yeah. 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 And, but it's, uh, yeah, exactly. Much of it's the same. And it's a nice run course. It does have some little rolling hills and, as you get into the course, um, but nice and shaded. Yeah. Really shaded course. It really is shaded. Yeah. Um, and it's really pretty. I mean, you're, you never leave the park. Right. Right. Um, you never leave the park for any segment. And I love that we have, back to the swim, I love when the swim, start and swim finish are in the same spot. 
Yeah. I think it has, oh, a, yeah. has a good vibe to it that people don't have to spread themselves out to try to get – they're watching someone race, get from swim start over to swim finish, and they can just come hang out, watch them go in the water, ease their anxiety, watch them go in the water if they're, you know, family, friends, whatever, yeah. and stay right there and watch them come out. The yeah, atmosphere of the swim exit when you have people starting there is also just – much livelier. Yeah. They're, they're loud and they cheer them on. Yeah. It's, it's a good time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Okay. okay. So we talked about athletes and the spectators mm-hmm. coming and going from the park. Right. In the past, talk about, you know, this is a state park. There's an entry fee typically to get into the state park. Talk mm. about that and how that's, that's working this year. Mm. So good, Joe. <laughs> so the way that's working this year is on Friday, we have packet pickup from four to six on Friday. Is that right? Four to six? I think that's Sorry, right. I just got poked in the eyeball <laughs> by my parsley. <laughs> Oopsie. Um, yeah, I think that's what it is. Look, it's on the website. It'll be in your report guys' emails. Um, you can enter the park. Whoever's in your car gets in for free because you're you know you're basically coming in to pick up your packet. Um, so that's a freebie. Just we'll have a pass that um, comes out in your email. You show it from your phone. You can print something out um, when you come in on Friday. We highly encourage you to come in and pick up your packets um, on Friday to get to know the venue, even if you've raced this race a lot, because we moved a little bit, get to know where you're checking in. And you can also check your bikes in, by the way, while we're talking about that. Um, so entry fee, free Friday. Entry fee Saturday, free for racers. We included that. We took care of that for you. We're paying that. Um, but for spectators that come with you in your car, be prepared to pay $5 per each adult. Per person? Yeah. Okay. All right, great. All right, so I was looking at my notes here because you brought them up, and so I was just (laughs) making sure I didn't forget anything. Yeah. And one thing that I did want to bring up, and actually I gotta, (laughs) um, I gotta show show my shoes. I gotta show my shoes. Please do. Because I noticed there's pickleball in this in this park. Um, We don't have a chance. And we have gotten sort of into pickleball, right? Yeah. None of us are players, but we've well, we've started. We've we've played once. We've dabbled. We played one day. And well, we loved it. They do have pickleball at Oak Mountain, which I'm going to bring our paddles. Yeah. And we're going to try to find time to go play at the pickleball court. But I was wearing these today in honor, not necessarily a pickleball, but just because Look at those. I'm a I'm a, you know, pseudo tennis player, aspiring pickleball player, <laughs> and I bought some old school Reebok pump shoes. So you know like the tongue where it has the pump? It's oh, got a tennis yeah. ball I remember pump. those. And so I, I wore these not, you know, it just coincided with this pickleball thing but yeah anyways i noticed those right away joe when i walked into the (laughs) office in case you've forgotten what happened about i don't know an hour or so ago you know what's great is i woke up this morning i got dressed and my family (laughs) never made one comment about this they were like no there's daddy again just (laughs) dressed in his ridiculous outfits (laughs) nobody even commented the, the abnormal is the norm for joe i don't wear these ever unless i'm i don't know and then the one day i do Will you wear those no playing comments. pickleball? Yeah. They're yeah. meant to play. So do you know the name Michael Chang? Do yeah. you remember yeah. that name, Michael I Chang? Do. Yeah. So Michael Chang is like a late 90s, no, I'm sorry, 90s tennis player, mm-hmm. um, American tennis player that played kind of in the Pete Sampras and Agassi era. Yep. He, this is kind of his shoe, like his oh, look. Oh, that was his and shoe. And so okay. it's a retro shoe they brought back, and I had yeah. to jump on it. So Yeah. <laughs> The 90s, that was a big decade for me, Joe. I'm, I'm very familiar with the 90s. You were pretty young during the 90s, but I was not. <laughs> well, we've talked about, those are formidable years in my life. Oh, that's true. We have talked um, about it. So this, yeah. we could have lots of, maybe we should just do it. We got lots of shows lined up here. We could talk about the 90s. The 90s <laughs> I'm very show. interested in what Faye Yates was doing in the 90s. <laughs> we can't talk about all that. <laughs> okay. I mean, we can, maybe not on the podcast. <laughs> Um, in front of us, we have not really talked about a couple things here, and that's a lot of the fun stuff we do at races, which are our medals, our awards, yeah. and different things. So um, displayed here on our YouTube channel, you can see, is our medal, but you can also check it out on our website and see. It's a fun little new design we're doing this year, kind of um, honoring kind of the park aspect of this race yeah. in Oak Mountain. So kind of taking the national or state park kind of look and feel and adopted that to the, the theme of the race. And then we've got some awards, and I wish we had a glass bottle beer, one of those that goes, <laughs> <laughs> um, because our awards this year are a really fun bike chain, like legit bike chain bottle opener award. Yeah. So we're excited about that. That has Buster Britton Triathlon um, logo on there as well. 
They're very cool. Very fun. I love our state park theme. The shirt as well has the yeah. state park theme. It's kind of got the, should, the yeah. black, gray, brown, orange kind of feel to it, yellow feel to it. So it's yeah. all kind of rustic and nature vibe to it. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We also have two great sponsors that help out with this race and mm-hmm. provide some um, gifts for our award winners, depending on, you know, what they have to offer and the numbers, but we have bike link yeah. provides gift bags every year. Yep. Um, this year we're super excited about the gift bags as they have some Tifosi sunglasses in there. Yeah. Um, it comes in a drawstring uh, bag to begin with, but also water bottle and some bike tubes and mm-hmm. handlebar tape and nutrition and other things. It's like such that. a big hit. People love getting these bags. It's like, yeah, yeah they, they, what we're lucky is that they haven't come to expect it at every race because we don't have a sponsor like Bike Link that does this it's at nice. every race. It's very nice. It's very nice. It's a luxury we have. And Bike Link is a fantastic sponsor. And they've been on board with this race I can't not, since I can remember yeah. um, for a long, long time. Um, they're great. And then we also have what? Track Shack. Track Shack. Gift Track cards. Shack. Track Shack has been an, our a partner of ours since they opened yeah. um, in Birmingham. They have three, three locations, I think, in Birmingham. Um, Valerie McLean, the founder of the Track Shack, good friend, all the guys there that work for her, guys and, and ladies that work with her are just good friends of ours. They're really good partners and okay. they've been very supportive. Yep. So the award ceremony is always a good time with all the great prizes we have to give out. And I think people are going to enjoy all that. Yeah, um, for sure. We talking about the post race a little bit. The vibe mm-hmm. of post race is always fun with this one, especially we get a lot of the local clubs that come out yeah. and they do it at most of our races. But this one, it's fun to see. Some of the newer clubs, there's like Magic City Tri Club, and mm-hmm. um, not a newer club, but Vulcan Triathletes comes out in around. full force. Yeah. And yep. um, Tri Chicks Gulf Coast, which is down in that Pensacola area, has a big a, group coming up for this race. I love it. Um, as does Tri Possibilities Coaching Group, yep. um, which also I believe is kind of in They're that general Pensacola. area. Yeah. So we got a lot of that Pensacola kind of Gulf Coast region coming mm-hmm. up to the Birmingham area for this race, which is always fun to have. So yeah. Big, huge shout out to our clubs that come out and set up their club tents and yeah. hang out for the entirety of the event. This venue, I think we've reached out to the clubs, but this mm-hmm. venue has other pavilions around. So we're at this pavilion that's right beside the uh, finish line, the pavilion between the finish line and the transition area is where we host our packet pickup and post-race celebration. But there's also some other pavilions that we've rented that people can enjoy. Oh, yeah. There's, what, five The of whole them? vibe down there yeah, is... How many like, pavilions do we have? Now, there's a total of five, but yeah. only three of them, I think, are sheltered pavilions. Others have, like, picnic tables and around. They're considered um, shelters. I'm, not, they're, they're not, I'm sorry, they don't have their picnic areas. They don't have a covered shelter. Okay. But it's super... This is the most state park vibey it gets is at this end of the park. Uh, super shaded, tons of beautiful trees. Yeah. Um, people are going to love it. So one other thing I wanted to mention, going back to the awards and, like, our sponsors that provide stuff, is mm-hmm. another sponsor is right along, as you come into the state park, Mountain High Outfitters, which is one of our yeah. patron-level sponsors. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're going to be passing one of their stores yeah. as you enter into the Oak Mountain State Park. So we encourage everybody yeah. to check that store out, as it's really nice. Absolutely. They've mm-hmm. got, and they've got stores all over. They're in our, our entire footprint, except maybe not Kentucky. We're in Louisville, but they're not there. Everywhere else. Yep. They're at the beach. There are several places in Birmingham. They're down in Auburn for people that come from that area. Yep. Yeah. They're all up in here. They're in this area. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything else that we need to talk about for Buster Britain? You know, I don't I don't think so. I think we've covered it. I think we've covered it. Um, okay. We have... Um, the course itself. I mean, do we need to talk about... We talked about everything about the course. Be prepared for the bike course. It's got a couple hills. And while you're on bike course, talk mm-hmm. about... Because I think we do this every time and we need to continue to emphasize the safety aspect of the bike course. Yeah. Which is, you know, every race we get... Right. We, we see it, we get comments about it, but we yeah. just want to continue to kind of hone in on yeah. the safety aspects to talk about, about yeah, that. Yeah, I think the number one thing is, you know, we're on, so we talked about before Joe mentioned, we're totally on state park roads and they're really beautiful. Um, we got some good rolling hills, got some good descents, some good climbs. Um, but this is, you know, we have two different race distances. So that means there's a two loop thing going on, right? So we've got the Olympic goes off first and then the sprint. So what we need people to do is remember that there are people coming up behind you. Um, especially with there being a two-loop aspect. So as you pass someone, you're always staying to the right. When you pass someone, just be sure you move back over. As soon as you make the pass, that way you're clearing the pathway for someone to again pass you. Um, because, you know, people, faster people are going to be starting after you've started your race. Yep. It's no blow to your ego. No. 
there's just going to be people that started after you. I mean, we do time trial swim starts. So there's always going to be some people that are faster coming by. So just make room for them. And if you're the one passing, try to be polite. Don't pass too closely. Give it as much room as you can. You know, stay on the you know your traffic side of the road. Um, it's not close to traffic, but it's low traffic. Oh, yeah. They have to have, I and mean, it's a state park. You're going to have some people that need to get into their campsites and to the golf course and things yep. like that. But it's very, very low traffic. Right. So it's not normal, just everyday no. traffic passing through That's that right. park. Not everyday. Pa- yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So just be respectful. I think if you just remember that, I think that's it's all good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's going to be a great weekend. Yeah, I'm ready. Really looking forward to it. And yeah. a lot of great dining establishments around, and you're so close to B- Birmingham as well. We encourage people to go check out downtown Birmingham. They do have a restaurant in the park now, too. Oh, yeah. Which has not been there. It was only there maybe last year for the first time, maybe the year before it opened right at the time we had the race. Um, but it's down like by the beach area. There's a swim area with a beach area, um, and there's a little restaurant there. They close at 4 o'clock, though, so make sh- that's one of those things that you would do maybe if you didn't get enough food from us after the race <laughs> um, or come in on Friday and enjoy that. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Well, there's still plenty of time to register. We're hoping for, yeah, I don't know, 500 plus people at this race. I think that's a realistic number. It is a realistic for number. For 2024. I think it is. I think we can get over 500. Okay. Okay. Well, check us out at magicsportsusa.com. And Faye, it's been a pleasure as always. As always. And thanks for the great drinks, Joe. Yeah. Enjoy. And I'm going to have one of those green olives. Cheers. Here in a few minutes. Have a great race.